Hello everyone, it's Detrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique. Um, before we get into what I want to talk about today and what, what our project is going to be, I just wanted to quickly show you guys a couple of things that have gotten finished up and um, are available for um, patterns on the AlluringBeeBoutique.com. I finished up this sunburst necklace project and it really came out beautiful. Uh, for the videos and the blog posts, I did this component, this component, and then we did a video on this component. And they're also all written up on um, on the blog at theallurringbeeboutique.com as well. I did a pattern for the pendant, which came out really cool. If you notice here that I, if you look on the back, you can see that I used the large um, ring here and did the brick stitch on the, you know around the bead frame. Then when I added the shell bead, I also added this cute little um, textured solid hoop component here on the front. And it just came out looking really good. And then I also did a companion pattern uh, for the construction of the necklace. So that starts out with these little sections down here. Uh, then we added this component. Then I did these sections to add this component. I repeated the original section here. And then I did a repeat of this tubular hair, or not tubular herringbone, but um, it's actually flat herringbone, but using two different color beads, and it created this beautiful little oval, oval effect. So also, you can buy the patterns on the website, obviously, but I'm also giving access to the pendant pattern and the necklace construction pattern as part of my Patreon uh, tier level offerings if you decide you want to help support me on patreon you can get access to these um patterns as well so i just wanted to show you how pretty it came out it's really gorgeous it just was fascinating to me how beautiful it all came together and so let's move that one out of the way and um on the website i also have the pattern for these little uh brick stitch on a frame earrings which came out really beautiful i've had these made for a while but the really cool thing is a lot of the beads that I used in this project are also uh, used in this separate project. Um, so if you were making the sunburst necklace and you had a little bit of beads left over, you could actually put these earrings together. And the hoops that came in the exact same pack as the hoops that I used on the sunburst project. So over the weekend I was visiting my mom's and I decided to stop by Joann's and grab a couple of more of these little packs of connectors just to show you how they look with they, when you buy the package. So here's what it comes lo looking like straight in the package. You get 24 pieces for like $3.99. Um, you can see by looking in here that you got three of each type of ring in um, two different sizes. And then you, you, know, you get the little plain flat ones here too. And they're all in this little pack. And that's where I've been getting most of my frames that I do uh, have done a lot of earring tutorials and now the necklace tutorial using these actual connector components from Joann's. They're really hard to find online. I tried looking for them online. I could not narrow down all of those, uh, you know, tons of items they have on, for sale online. But maybe if you type in Hildy and Joe uh, connectors, you will actually bring it up. But they have... This is like the gun metal or black nickel as they call it. Um, um, I looked on the receipt, it said black nickel. Um, they also have the bright silver. They have the uh, antique copper. They have the antique brass or bronze looking ones. Um, they don't have any gold ones, but they do have the bright silver. And so this is the ones I've been using for the past couple of years for most of these brick stitch on a frame videos that I've been showing you guys. Anyhow, so you can get this pattern online at, at my shop or on my Etsy shop. If you need rings for any of these projects and you cannot get them where you live or anything, let me know. I'd be happy to, to maybe try to accommodate by selling them, selling the sets of them or whatever over on the website. So I'll just leave that up to you guys to let me know. All right, we have one more little pattern. This is my Trillium earring pattern. I love this little pattern. I did these at Christmas time, but I finally got around to finishing writing up the pattern. I am going to be uploading that pattern and making it available uh, sometime by the end of this week but they're really pretty uh, it takes us some little bit of mini duos diamond duos a couple of little fire 
four millimeter fire polish and then some seed beads and uh, on these I use the uh, these pretty little gold plated brass ball hip pins for the ear wires I made those out of ball hip pins and also used the wire protectors but all the information is in the pattern and it will be available later this week maybe by tomorrow or even tonight uh, I do want to show you these beautiful little I, I named these the fairy cross earrings and they are made with sea beads and little um, faceted garnet gemstones like you would normally think about putting in a ring or something they kind of reminded me of the Swarovski chatons but I did this beautiful little earring I might I'm either going to do a pattern for these or a, a Skillshare class. I'm not sure which yet, but those are coming up really, really soon. I got a little bit behind because my little new grandson was born. And then I spent a few days up at my mom's. But um, look forward to these beautiful little fairy cross earrings, either as a Skillshare class or a pattern. And uh, the, like I said, there's going to be some new things coming to my Patreon because I'm trying to build the Patreon channel. But let's go ahead and move all this out of the way and let's talk about what we're going to work on today. So a while back I made these little bracelets. And the first one I made was this purple one. And I made it a very long time ago when I first started bead weaving. But it's really pretty and I love the way that it came out. It almost looks like grapes on a vine or something. It's really pretty. And then last year I made another one uh, out of a different color. And I just think they're adorable. They're really delicate, but they're they're sturdy. So they've got a lot of thread in there, so they're actually pretty sturdy for something that looks so dainty. Anyhow, so I had a girlfriend who asked me if I could make a necklace similar to the bracelet. And I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to do that. That's what this video is going to be about. But here's the pattern. It's called the Inviting Vine. It's designed by Donna Graves. And this is a free pattern that you can print off of the beadandbutton.com. At least it used to be because I got it for free off of Bead and Button. And so this is basically the pattern that we're going to go by. And we're going to use the seed beads that my girlfriend wants for the necklace. And I'm going to change this pattern up a little bit because I intend on using a couple of different colors in the vine. Um for the vine section which on the pattern here is gold then you have the little green sections which are like leaves and I'm going to use I'm going to make it like a two-tone color on the leaves we've got a couple of colors of green in here and then for the flowers we are going to also use uh, several colors we're going to use three colors and make these little flowers have like an ombre effect when we put them together on our bead weaving so if we take a look at the pattern and we look at the materials here what it says here is that you need size 11 seed beads 10 grams each in three colors I can tell you right now that it doesn't take that many uh, grams of seed beads to make a bracelet but since we're I'm going to be working on a necklace it, uh, you guys can decide if you want to make a necklace or if you want to make you know a bracelet or whatever but all you're going to need are three colors of 11 O's at the, for the very basic you need your lobster claw clasp and a split split ring. She is using the eight pound fire line here and a size 12 beading needle. I will be using a .006 fire line and most likely a size 10 or 11 beading needle. So let's talk about these beads. All right, so these are the colors and beads that my girlfriend picked out for the necklace. Um, like I said on the pattern, it calls for all 11s, but I'm going to be using some 15s. Um, I'm not going to uh, be able to give you the exact name of these beads, but I can give you the color code. So these are a bronze bead. They're a metallic 15-0. says here 457L. That's a color code. Um, this is also a 15-0. The color code here is 17B. Uh, that's a, one of the... They're, actually look like a silver lined um, teal or zircon so I've got those out I've got two bead treasures 11 OC beads by check other check glass beads these are transparent red and these ones are a uh, transparent garnet so those are the beads we know the colors of these two I couldn't really tell you um, they were in these bags when she gave them to me but I can give you this much information 
These green ones are a frosted or matte finish, and they are an emerald green or even borderlining on a forest green because they've got a little bit of a blue hue to them. And I'm going to call them emerald for purposes of this video. The other ones, these are also a garnet bead, uh, but they are a little bit darker than the garnet check glass that I have here. Um, let me put a couple of each on here and you can take a look up close. Um, you can see that they're very similar. These ones are just a hair lighter in color than these ones. Uh, so they should make a nice little ombre effect to the flowers. So how I'm going to work this is I'm going to be using these bronze beads for the main part of the stem. Which you can see here I did in gold. I'm going to be using the two colors of greens for the little leaf section. Each leaf has five beads. So it will probably um, pick up you know for the bottom two beads the darker green and then use the light the um more bluish color towards the top of each leaf and then for the flowers um we will be using i will be using a combination of the three different colors of beads so let's go ahead and get our materials out and get ready and we'll get started as i work along i will talk to you about uh, how to do this in just a simple three color if you want, but basically since that is uh, Someone else's design and pattern. I am going to leave it to you to find your own copy If that's how you want to make it exactly like the one that I have to go by here So I'm going to start out with about a wingspan and a half or uh, close to two wingspans of my 0 .006 black satin fire line and I do have a stop bead in place. And I left myself, I'm going to guess, about a good six inch tail or so here. So to begin with, I'm going to pick up three of my vine beads. Then I'm going to pick up five of my uh, leaf beads. But I'm going to pick them up in such a way as this. I'm going to pick up one of my opaque or my mats, then three of my silver lines and one mat. Oh, let this come all the way down towards my tail, uh, my stop bead and my tail thread. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip over those five green beads. We are going to sew back down through two of the 15-0 bronze. Just like that. I'm going to pull that into position to form my little leaf and shape it up a little bit. Then, I am going to come around the other side of this last bronze bead here, and I'm going to go through that bronze bead plus the other two bronze beads. So, we're going to come from the bottom of that bronze bead that we haven't went through yet and go up through all three of these little bronze beads. And it's going to be a little tight because I'm using 15 ounce. But you see I'm coming through this bead from the other side. I came down through those two towards myself. I'm looping around the outside of that bead and going back through all three of those bronze beads. And then pull my needle. So that my thread is exiting the bronze bead and I have the little leaf sitting off to the side. Just like that. I'm going to pick up the same sequence of beads, which is three of the bronze, one matte, three silver lined, one matte. I'm going to drop all that down. We are going to sew back through and skip over the green beads again. We're going to sew back through all three of these little bronze beads here. Just like this. I'm going to pull our little leaf beads into position. I'll snug that back down to the work. So that now we have these two little leaves sitting like this. Now we're going to sew up through that matte green bead. 
from coming out of this bronze and sewing up through that just that first green bead right there. Pull the thread. Just like that. So we're going to pick up our same sequence of beads again, which are the three bronze and our five green beads in the correct order. We're going to drop those ones down. We're going to skip those green ones. We're going to come back through all three of those bronze. Just like we did before. Pull through. And now we're going to sew up through this first green bead on the opposite leaf right here, like that. So there's where our bead work looks like. And here's where we are currently exiting from the top of that green bead on the leaf to the left. So now we're just going to repeat the steps for the uh, those second two leaves we added here over and over until we reach the length of the vine. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you a few more. So we're going to pick up, you know, our three bronze. Then we're going to pick up the five green. And I'm using, look, once again, I'm picking up one mat, three silver line, and then another mat. Just like that. We're going to drop them down. We are going to skip over the green ones and come back through the three bronze ones. Pull that in. Then we're going to stitch up through the mat bead on the opposite side. So it's going to be the inside edge green bead here on the leaf opposite. And pull it in. And we'll repeat the leaf on this side. We'll pick up our three vine colored beads, which these little beads are all sticking together for some reason, but and we're going to pick up the three green of our choice. I mean the five green, sorry, five green. And drop them down. We're going to skip over those green ones and come back through just the bronze. Snug it up into the beadwork just by pinching and pulling like that. And then we would cross back over the center and go up through that uh, bead on the inside edge of the opposite leaf which is for, going to be easy for me because those are my mat beads each time I will just go up through the mat bead on the inside section of each leaf and you can just repeat that until you've gotten your bead work as long as you want it I'll show you just a couple more pick up three vine and five leaf Let them drop down. Skip over your leaf colored beads and come back through your vine beads. Which I'm using those little tiny 15 O's, so it's going to be, you know, take me a little longer than if there were 11's. Make sure you don't skip any. That you're going through all three of those vine beads each time. And then just jump across the center and come up through that, uh, it, the last bead of your leaf on the inside edge. So that's how we would go ahead and do if we were just going to keep on building our entire uh, vine first. And then come back through, we would come back through and do our flowers afterwards. So as you're working along, you're going to want to make sure that you snug your beads down each time so that the beadwork pulls itself together. If you look along this line of my, uh, my vine here, 
you'll see that, I mean, it almost looks like there's a little bit too much thread right there between that bronze bead and that gold, or green bead. But if I pull it nice and tight, it's laying actually really good. So if you lay it down, you can see that it's laying nice and flat like this. And that's the look you're going for. When you pass down through your three bronze beads, make sure you don't accidentally go back into the green bead. Make sure you're only going through the bronze beads and then go up through the green bead on the opposite side. Okay, so since I'm making a necklace, and I, for, I, I think I forgot to mention that this is going to be a necklace for a little girl. And um, so what I did was I went ahead and stitched out a little over 16 inches of my vine, and I actually stitched almost till I was completely out of thread. So what I did at this point was I tied a half hitch knot, I finished this leaf on this side, then I stitched up through the green seed bead on, on the opposite side, just like we would have been if we were going to add another leaf. I tied a half hitch knot right there, and then I just put another stop bead onto, uh, onto the remaining thread right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on coming back through and adding some flowers. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to get another length of thread onto my needle. And when I come back, I'll show you guys how we're going to stitch in and create the little buds all along the vine. All right, so we're going to be adding our flowers on every third leaf. And this, um, as you can see, the farthest one down towards my stop bead is this uh, little set of leaves over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my thread right through that little circle of beads that make up the leaf. And I'm just going to tie myself two overhand knots in between two of my green seed beads just to tie my thread on. And I want to make sure that my knots land in the same position both times. So give me just a moment to get my thread straightened out here. So it's actually landing right there in between those two first two of, of the zircon colored CB. So I've got two knots tied there. And I'm just going to try my best to ignore my tail thread. I'm going to use that tail thread to add my clasp at the end. So now what I want to do is I want to stitch around until I'm exiting from this green matte seed bead towards the inside of my vine right there. So I'm just going to pass my needle through the next few beads until I can be exiting that particular bead. And I've got a pretty long thread on here. It says to thread on uh, nine tenths of a meter. I probably have a little bit more than a meter or three feet. I've probably got about four feet or so on here. So I'm going to stitch into that first mat bead right there closest to the vine on the inside of the work towards the center of the of the piece. All right, so now I am in position to start adding my little flower beads. So now we're ready to go ahead and start adding these flowers. So I dumped out my three colors of 11 OC beads. I'll just have to show you like that. Okay. If I was going to use all one color, it would be a lot simpler, but I'm not using all one color, so y'all just bear with me here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this middle color of my check glass beads here, the check glass garnet. We're going to pick up one bead. And if you're using all one color, that's more power to you on that. We're going to pick up one bead, and we're going to come right back through the same bead we're exiting right there. Just like that. I'm going to pull that through. And we're going to position that bead so it sits pretty much like, almost like a ladder stitch on top of the green bead. Just like that. So now I'm going to pick up three of my next color beads. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this pretty uh, transparent red. Now I got three beads on. I'm going to come right back through that same green bead just like I did previously. Right there from the opposite side. And I'm going to pull that through. Now I'll loop those three red beads on top of my little transparent garnet bead. Just like that. And now I'm going to pick up five of my third color. Which are these slightly darker garnet beads that my friend gave me in the bag. So now I've got to find my little green bead and I got to pass right back through that bead one more time. I 
I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing them. I might have to move my work around the other way. There it is. So I'm going to come right back through that same green bead one last time. Now I'm going to pull it all through. You can see how it just makes this beautiful little lumpy looking little flower. So now there's my first bead down here. There's my three red beads here. And then there's my grouping of five garnet beads right there. And I am exiting, I'll flip it over so you can actually see a little bit better, but I am exiting from that matte green bead closest to these uh, my bronze beads along my stem. So now I have to sew up until I get to this fourth leaf here on the left hand side. So I was exiting that green bead, I'm just going to simply come up through the three bronze beads of the stem of my next leaf right there on the left. I'm going to pull my thread through. Then I'm going to pass up through the green bead plus the next three bronze beads here also on the left. And pull my thread. So now I want to go into the first green bead on this leaf. So I'm going to come up through the first matte green leaf bead here, closest to the center of my bracelet right there. Now I'm ready to add my next grouping of uh, my floral beads. So once again, I'm going to pick up one from my first pile. And I'm coming through that green bead, so I'm going to pass right straight back through that bead from the opposite side. Pull that bead in. Then I'm going to pick up three of my bright red transparent beads. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sew right back through that same green bead. And hopefully not to get a mess going on with all these threads I got down here at the bottom. So those are in place. And then I'm, I made a mistake. I need to pick up four of my final color. So we'll use these darker beads. I popped a, the one out previously on this flower bud. So now I've got my four beads on and I need to come right back through that green bead one more time. Right there. And hopefully I don't have a bead stuck on my needle here. My needle might be a little bit bent. Let me pick up a different one. My four beads on. And I'm going to come back through the same green bead right there. And so there's my second little flower, vine flower, right here on the fourth leaf. So now I need to sew up until a count of three. So one, two, three. This is the bead I want to be exiting next to add more flowers. So what I need to do is I need to cross over. So I was correct. I'm sorry. I was correct the first time. We are going to go up through those vine beads, but let's take a look at why we're doing that. If you'll remember, as we added each new leaf, we were actually exiting from that first green bead towards the center of the work each time when we picked up our three bronze and our five little green ones. So we can use utilize that as our stitching technique now. Every time we're coming out of that first green bead, we can safely pass up through the next three bronze. And that's still following the thread path. So we're going to come up through there. Pull your thread nice and snug at that point. And now I need to cross over because I want to be coming onto the other side. So here I am coming out of this leaf. 
I need to count forward. So here's the first one. One, two, three. Here's my first one. One, two, three. So I need to cross over at this point into these three go, um, bronze beads on the opposite side. So on the right hand side of this necklace. So I'm going to come over and cross right through the center of those three beads. Make sure my thread doesn't get hung up on my little buds. And now I can pass into the green bead that I need to be on to create my next little flower grouping. So I can just go right straight into that green bead, that first green bead, there towards the center of the necklace, the mat. Another good reason for using those two colors of greens, it makes it easier for me to see where I'm going. So one, two, three. So now we're ready for our next flower. I'm just going to repeat the same steps each time. We're going to pick up the first bead and pass right back through the green bead. And we're going to pick up three. And we're going to pass through the same bead again. you get all your tail threads and little pieces of thread out of there okay so I had a little slight problem I've got my four beads on and I'm going to pass back through my same green bead one more time and I hope you guys got all that but if you didn't I will show you right now so now we have that flower added onto the third leaf so now we need to stitch forward and once again, we're just going to go ahead and use our little vine beads to, to handle that. We're coming out of the bead, the green bead on this side. So we're going to go up through those three bronze beads right above it. We make sure that our thread doesn't get hung up on the rest of the beadwork. And now we're going to stitch up until to the next section where we want to add our red beads. So basically, I am coming out of that bead right here, that third bronze bead. I'm going to go through the green one. And actually, let me make sure what I'm doing. So uh, one, two, three. Actually, I'm not going through the green one. I am simply going to stitch over and go up through the three bronze beads on the opposite side, right there. You guys have to just bear with me while I get this all working. Once we get away from this tail section here, it should go a little smoother. So now we are ready to step into the green bead towards the center right there and the trick to this is going to be making sure your thread doesn't get hung up on your leaves or your flowers so I got in my needle drawer and I dug out a size a uh, smaller size needle this is probably a, four, a 15 size 15 needle now I'm ready to make my next little flower here on the left hand side of this necklace. So we're going to start with the same one bead and we're going to pass right back through that same green bead we're exiting right there. I'll show you a couple more and then I'm going to let you guys go ahead and work because I've got a lot to do to do a 16 inch necklace. So I pull that little bead into position. And I'm going to pick up my three of my transparent red. And go right back through the same green bead again. Right there.
Then I'm going to pick up four of my third color. And I'm going to pass through the same first green bead of that leaf one more time. I'm going to put my visor down. And then I'm just going to pull those beads into position. Just like that. So now I'm ready to sew up to the next uh, third leaf. So there's one, two, three. So I'm just going to come up my green beads. I mean my bronze beads, I'm sorry. I'm going to come up all three of these right here on the left And then I'm going to cross over into the three on the right. Right there. And then I just need to step through my green bead and start adding my floral beads again. So right there. So let's do these flowers one more time. We're going to start with one. Pass right back through the same green bead we're exiting. And we're going to pick up three. Go right back through the same green bead one more time. And then we'll pick up our last four and come back through our green bead one more time. You can move those other beads out of your way so you can make sure you're going through the right green bead right there. I don't want to go through that zircon bead, just the, just the matte bead. Then we'll step through the three bronze beads right in front of the bead we're exiting. On the same side, which this time is the right hand side, we just added our flower on the right. Then we're going to cross over into the next three on the left. Get my thread off of my little previous bead work. And then I'm going to step into the green bead here on the left. Right there. Okay, now I'm just going to keep on repeating that all the way down my length of beadwork. Folks, um, as you're working along, you may want to lay your necklace or bracelet down to uh, get a, when you want to gauge where you're going to next with your thread. And the reason being because you want this to lay nice and flat on the back side. So if you look on the back... You can see that I have a nice flat uh, surface on my beadwork. And then when I lay it down on the front, you can see that all of it is not pulling too tight. Let me zoom out. And it's not uh, pulling so tight that it's, you know, losing too much length. You're going to lose a little bit of length as you come back through and add these flowers. So that's another reason why I left the open end here in case I need to add more length on the other end of my necklace. All right, so I'm going to keep working. I've got several of my little flowers done, and I'm going to keep adding my blooms in until I reach the end of the necklace, and I'll meet you guys back, and we'll talk about how you end this type of project. So I've 
finished up my necklace and I've come out with um not quite but just about 17 inches and it looks really beautiful my flowers are all laying nice the back is all uh, laying nice and flat it looks pretty good and so the last thing I had done was stitch this little bloom here at the top and my thread is exiting from the uh, matte green seed bead that we've been using to add these little blooms all the way along so now I want to add a clasp and I'm going to use my working thread to add one end of this toggle clasp then I'm going to tie my thread off I'll show you how to do that then we're going to come down here and we are going to use this um, the remaining tail thread to add the other half of the clasp so with my working thread exiting from the matte green seed bead where we added the bloom, I'm going to just go continue to sew around those green beads of this leaf. So I'm going to push through the next um, little zircon beads, little silver line ones. Oops, sorry. Kind of got, got my own way there just a little bit. So I'm going to push through those two green beads. When I pull my thread, I'm going to make sure it doesn't get hung around those little, uh, my little garnet beads and red beads there. And then I'm going to go through that next zircon and the next little matte green right there, coming on around the leaf. And then I'm going to push right back up through that very first green bead, matte green bead, that we used to stitch our flowers on. And I'm going to try my best to just be coming out of that matte bead right there. And I'll go ahead and pull my thread. So now that it secures my little flower beads pretty nice and tight up against that leaf. And I can work on adding my clasp. So I'm going to just use these little bronze 15 O's to add my clasp. And I'm going to pick up several of them. So let me just... Do um, see how many you want to pick up and I'll let you know because it's kind of a trial and error so on the end that I put my bar on I'm going to need a little bit of length there so that my bar will fit through the little loop of the toggle clasp without you know catching up against the beadwork it's a pretty small circle and I don't want to run into any problems So I picked up nine of my 15 O's and I just kind of let them drop down up against my beadwork just like that. I'm going to pick up my little toggle bar and pass my needle through one side of the loop. And then I am going to pick up one more bead. I'm going to skip a bead and I'm going to come down through all of these rest of those beads again. That when I pull it through and pull it nice and snug, this is what it winds up looking like. I have one little 15 0 on either side of my hoop, and then my thread is coming back down through the remaining beads all the way down. Once I get down here, I want to sew, I'm going to sew into these zircon beads right here. I'm not going to sew into that green bead that we were exiting. I'm just going to skip over and sew it back around this leaf starting with the zircon beads. And then I'm going to come down through this zircon and the matte green on the far side. And now I got to move my little berry beads out of the way there, my little flower beads. And I want to come up through just my matte green bead right there. Like that. And then I'm going to reinforce all of these beads here again. Alright, so here I am and I'm coming out of the bottom of my bronze beads again. So what we're going to do 
is we are going to sew around our leaf one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and head through those two little zircon beads, just like we did before. Don't let your thread get hung up on your toggle bar. Then I am going to go through one more of my zircon beads right there. And then I want to show you how to tie a half inch knot. So I'm going to come through that next bead. And then I'm going to start tying a few knots. So my working thread is exiting between that zircon bead and that matte green bead right there. So I'm just going to take my needle, needle and poke it right through the hole of the leaf, the center of the leaf. And I'm going to pull until I have this little loop. I'm going to stick my needle right through that little tiny loop. And I'm going to pull nice and slow because when I pull my knot down, I want to make sure it falls between that zircon bead and that green matte bead right there. And there's a half hitch knot. So now I'm going to come through the green bead. That matte green. And now I'm going to come down through these three little bronze beads in the center that are part of my stem. And all the while I keep pulling my thread nice and snug. So now that I'm there, I'm going to come up to, my thread is exiting here, right there. I'm going to go up into this leaf on the left. So I'm going to go up the closest matte green bead to my left. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to tie another knot. So I'm going to take my needle and stick it right through the center of my leaf. And I'm going to pull nice and slow till I have a little loop form right there. I'm going to stick my needle right through that loop. And then I'm going to make sure that my knot falls between the zircon bead and the green matte bead right there. So let me pull that little knot in. Pull it nice and tight. And then we'll just pass through the zircon beads here on the edge. So just pass through your zircons. And now that I'm on this side of the leaf, I'm going to tie another knot between those two beads. Because it works a little bit better if I have a couple of a big bead and a smaller bead to slip my knot in between. So there's my little loop going right back through. And I'm going to pull that knot down right between those two beads. Now I can come through the green bead. And work my way down through these little bronze beads on the stem, on the stem, or on the vine. Make sure you don't skip any of them to come through all three. And pull. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just keep working my way down and across and tying a couple of half inch knots on the speed work. And then I will, um, after I tie my last knot, I will move my needle, a thread away from that knot by passing through a bead or two and cut the thread. Now on this end, I happen to have this little piece of tail here where I tied my thread on to add my floral beads. And this is my original tail thread over here. Now I've already took my stop bead off and threaded my needle on. I am exiting from that bronze bead at the end. And this time I don't have to pick up too many. I'm probably going to pick up about nine more beads again. Actually, I'm going to pick up, let's say, five on one side, pick up my toggle bar or toggle loop, and put five more on the other side. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do a very similar thing to what we did previously. Um, we're going to put our beads on, let everything slide down. 
we are going to come right back through those three beads here on the base, those three bronze beads right there. We're going to pull those beads in, in our little loop. It's going to sit like that. So now that I'm exiting from that bead here, I'm going to come through these green beads on my left. Hold the phone. Now it looks good. So let me just flip it around. I'm going to pass through the one uh, matte green bead. Now I'm going to come through to this where I can find where this thread's exiting. So I only need to come through one of my zircon beads. I'm going to go ahead and tie these two threads together. Make sure my knot lands in between the zircon beads here on the base. Just like that. And then I can continue on through the next two zircon beads. Coming, still coming around my leaf. Right there. And then I've got to find my position. And then I'm going to come through the matte green bead here on the opposite side closest to where my working thread is right there now you can sew back up through all of these bronze beads one more time to make a nice reinforcement loop pass up through all your bronze beads don't forget to go through the center hole of your toggle and come back down around and tie another knot then you'll just simply move away from the knots, pull your pull as tight as you can to kind of pop your knot down into your beads, and then end your threads. So I went ahead and reinforced this loop here. Uh, went down in and tied my two threads together again. Then I passed through several beads and ended the threads. And so it looks really nice. My toggle bar fits through the toggle nice and easily because I gave it a lot of room to move right here with these long beads, long stretch of beads. And here's what the beautiful little necklace looks like. And it is really pretty. Last night, of course, this took me a couple of days to actually work, you guys. Um, I'm not that fast of a beater that I did it all in like a couple of hours. It took probably, um, I'm going to say about four, a good four hours, maybe a little bit longer to make the entire thing. But I got to thinking last night, if you wanted to do this as a rope, all you would simply have to do would be, you would, of course, you would want to use maybe like a .004 thread to begin with. And you would come back through with another thread, and you could just alternate your, where you put your flowers on the back side of the, of the vine. And then the thing would look more like an actual rope. And it wouldn't really matter if, if it got twisted around when it lays. This one lays nice and flat. So I'm going to pull it along and let you see. So when I pull it across through here, it lays really well. But on the neck, you know, it could twist a little bit, especially because this one's for a little girl. Um, you know, maybe we'll come back and we'll do it like a rope at some point. But I'm going to stop for today. Like I said, this is not my pattern. This is um, the, the nice lady. Um, Donna Graves is the one who done the, did the pattern. Uh, like I said, you can get it free on bead and button at beadandbutton.com. That's where I found it a long time ago. Probably like three or four years ago. And I've used it to make several different things, like um, bracelets and now the necklace. All right, guys, so that's basically what it is. It's like a, it's like St. Peter, Petersburg stitch, kind of like. And um, that's it. I hope you guys like this cute little necklace video. Um, have fun making lots of different vines of your own use all different colors make bracelets necklaces and um i will meet you guys back pretty soon to work on the pearls on the half shell project that's um we'll be working mostly on the alluringbeeboutique.com on my blog all right folks thanks for watching and have a great day